subject in the corporate communication and public relations field. He is also a seasoned speaker and is frequently invited to address groups of various sizes. While with EDI Malaysia's Nian Berhad, for example, he was selected by UN EDI Facts to be an UN resource person and speaker on EDI technology. So I will invite our speaker today, Mr. Sharudin Ghani, to present his topic for today, English Conversation for Practice. Thank you, Dini. Good afternoon and uh, assalamualaikum to, to everyone here. Thank you for joining us. Um, we will probably get more people coming in. But in the meantime, let's just go on because we were, we were supposed to start at two o'clock. May I just, one more time, may I just um, encourage you to turn on your video so that we can have a two-way uh, communication. All right, thank you. Let me start with um, today's program. Um, the, the program is called English Conversations for Practice. So I'll start by introducing myself and then uh, we go right into what is a conversation, which we, we talk about conversation, but what is a conversation? And then we go into why do people converse? Why talk to each other? Um, and why is it important not just to converse, but to converse well? And um, when you say good conversation skills, what do you really mean? What do we really mean by it? We'll talk about that as well. We'll discuss that. And then how to improve conversation skills. I'm going to be using my experience, um, most of which you, you can't really find in a book. Eh? You can, but, but more than just a book um, experience, I'm going to be using my lifetime experience. And then we, we will uh, discuss do's and don'ts of conversation, what to do to have a good conversation, what not to do, what to avoid to, to have a good and smooth and positive conversation. And I have this uh, segment called Four Things Not to Say. There are many, many other things not to say, but I just pick out this for more, more common, most common mistakes. Yeah. All right. And then, um, we will share tips and takeaways. And we have conclusion and summary. And at the, at the very last, we will have, I hope uh, the most interesting part of it all, questions from you and discussions. Okay, now, um, I'm sure most of you, if not all of you are familiar with uh, webinar format, right? Um, it's um, usually me talking and then you listening and then at the end, we will uh, have a chance for a discussion through the question and answer session. But may I encourage you to do one thing. If during uh, any, any of these topics here, during any of the sessions here, if you have questions, I encourage you to write into, your, uh, into the chat uh, room. Write your name. I mean, your name will, be, will appear, but write your questions in the chat room. And I'll try to answer it uh, at the end of the session. Okay, right. There is no secret formula for having good conversations or to become a good conversation person. It just means practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. All right, just a little bit about me. Before I go and tell you all about myself, uh, please don't think that this is a, a, a chance for me to write or boast what I've done over the years, okay? I'm gonna tell you about myself only because I want to assure you that I've been there, I've done that, and so and so you can um, rest assured that you're listening to someone who uh, is speaking from experience rather than who's going to tell you something from the book which you can read by yourself, all right? Okay, let's, let's go into that. Um, my name is Shaharuddin bin Abdulgani, that's my full name, but I'm also very uh, uh, very well known as, or rather most commonly known as Shah Ghani, um, simply because when I work overseas, it's difficult for foreigners to pronounce my full name. It's even 
uh, sometimes even difficult for locals to pronounce my full name. So that's why I've taken a, a shorter name, which is a uh, professional name, if you can call it Shagani. Okay, I'm married with four children, four grown-up children. Um, I have more than, actually more than 40 years experience in marketing, corporate communications, marketing communications, public relations, training. Training is um, ongoing. Uh, ever since I started working, I've also been asked to train. Public speaking, travel industry, publications, advertising, sales, and I've done a lot more than that, um, this kind of work. Again, not to brag, but it's just to assure you that I have, um, I have some experience. I worked in this, I uh, lived and worked in the six countries, Malaysia, of course, Saudi Arabia, Canada, Indonesia, and that's Ukraine, and then Croatia. The industry is yeah. yeah. Who's, who's, who's speaking? Okay. Um, cam yeah. I, I, I will encourage camera on, but uh, uh, mic, mic off, mic on mute. Okay. The industries I work in, heavy equipment and engineering, some of the companies I work for in the Samdavi, uh, Pernas Samdavi, Tractors Malaysia, uh, Gasri, and then a company in, in Indonesia, in Sumatra. I also work in travel and tourism. I, I, I lived and worked in, in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Uh, then I also, um, this is the main part of my adult working career, PR and communications. I worked for a company in Ukraine, and uh, in Malaysia, Edelman, Ogilvy, Malaysia, Ogilvy, Indonesia. In the auto industry, I work for Ford Malaysia. International consumer goods trading in Zagreb. And information technology, EDI Malaysia, as um, our host, Dini mentioned earlier, I work for a company called EDI Malaysia which owns the brand name Dagangnet. In fact, the company is now called Dagangnet. Okay, so let's get started. Now that I've established the fact that, you know, um, you can listen to what I say and maybe take some um, uh, knowledge from my experience. Let's get started. What is a conversation? The dictionary defines it as a talk, especially an informal one, um, between two or more people in which news and ideas are exchanged. If it's more formal, then you can call it a discussion or a meeting. But if it's an informal uh, talk, then you call it a conversation, okay? Between two or more people in which news and ideas are exchanged. Remember that. It's a form of communication. You communicate with each other through conversations. It's a two-way exchange, right? You can you can you converse by by yourself? Well, I guess you can. Look at the mirror and and speak to yourself. I don't know if you want to do that every day because then um, you have to question whether you are healthy mentally or not. Okay, typical communication mode. Right. Pay attention to listening. Right. If there must be a sender. A sender sends a message, and then and then there's a, a receiver. Look at this one here. Listen, listening. You know, pay attention to that word because throughout the next uh, two hours or so, we're going to be see we're going to be looking at how and why listening is important in to become a good conversationalist. Okay, so you send a message, the the the, the receiver receives it, and the receiver hopefully will speak back at you. That means they will feedback to you. They will respond to you. And so that's how the communication model uh, uh, works. Now, why do people converse? Why do you need to talk to each other? It's mainly to communicate and exchange what? Exchange what? Information, opinions, and ideas. Okay? These are the main things that you, you uh, communicate and exchange when you converse, when you talk to someone else. 
and also sometimes to ask and find out about something or someone. Okay. Now, some of us, we converse because we want to establish social connection. It's important to have social connections because no person can exist by themselves. Now, a, a big part of why we, we speak to other people is to sell ourselves. I hope everyone of you know what this means. This means that, for example, if you want to tell someone that you are the right person, let, let, let's take an extreme example. You are, you are interested in, um, if you're a girl, you're interested in a, in, in a man, in a boy, and you're not married yet, and you want to tell the, the, the boy, okay, um, maybe we should know each other better, but you have to give him a reason why you want to know, uh, he wants to know you. So you you sell your good virtues. You, see, you tell him why he should, he should be interested in you. It's the same thing. It works the other way around as well. Now, take something more seriously. If you go for a job interview, a job interview is a form of conversation. It is a more formal form, yes, but it is a conversation. Now, in a job interview, what is your objective? The objective is to convince the person interviewing you, the interviewer, that you are the best person for that job. You want to leave that impression that you are qualified in every way. So, um, paper qualifications is good. He, he, the, the interviewer, uh, the, the hirer can look at your, your resume and, um, and, and see how qualified you are. But when they call you for a reason, they call you to, to, for an interview for a reason, because they want to see you in person and how well you can converse, how well you can convince them that you are the person they need for the job. Why is it important to converse well? I just gave you one of the good, uh, one of the, uh, good reasons, which is to uh, sell yourself during an interview. Now, also, you need to be a, a good conversationalist because you need to show respect for your conversation partner, and how do you do this? By showing your interest in your conversation partner. It has to be uh, very, um, what do you call this? Um, natural interest, right? Don't, don't go overboard. Uh, don't, don't go uh, showing too much interest until your partner becomes a bit wary. What is this person up to? What does he or she want from me? But be natural. Show your natural interest in your conversation partner. Someone said this, good conversations with the right people are priceless because you learn so much about each other and there's a good chance that you will form a good bond with each other. And that is important in relationships, in human relationships. As I said earlier, to present yourself or sell yourself well and make favorable impressions. Don't forget, I'll repeat this. You must look at a job interview as a conversation. It is a conversation. Yes, it is a test of how well you converse, but take it as a conversation. Be natural. Don't be too relaxed if, uh, you know, because there's a chance that you might get too um, over-friendly um, and not stay on topic. But remember what your objective is when you go for an interview. You want to impress them. So speak and and uh, speak in a in a manner that you think that you know will convince them that you are the right person for the job you also uh, converse because you want to learn more and you never stop learning i am already very experienced like i showed you for 40 years but every day every day i am alhamdulillah I'm very happy that I'm learning something new. You never stop learning. Don't ever think, oh, I know everything already. The minute you think that way, I, I think you can say, you can say goodbye to your career because there's always someone who knows better than you and someone you can learn from, okay? 
So remember, you you need to converse with others so that you can learn um, from a new information. You can learn their ideas and viewpoints of others because no person can exist by himself or herself. No person is an island. The saying used to go, no man is an island, but it's now politically probably incorrect to say there's, there's no man in, uh, is an island because we need to be inclusive. So I prefer to say no person is an island now. Okay, um, can I have a show of hands by thumbs up if everything is okay right now? Or do you want me to go back and repeat something? All right, I've got one, two, three. Okay, so everyone okay on board now? Everyone with me following? Right. Great, so we can move on. Right, so we, we talk about having good conversational skills. When we say that, what do we really mean by that? So let's examine. These are my ideas, and um, again, through experience, and through a lot of reading, and through being in a lot of conversations, some important ones, some really unimportant ones, some bawang ones as well. So uh, based on all this kind of experience, this is what I find. When you are able to communicate and receive ideas, information and viewpoints well, don't forget, it's a two-way thing, right? Two-way thing. Not just you talking alone, but you talking with someone else, either one or many others, but it has to be a two-way thing, okay? You, you, you will communicate your ideas and you're also willing to receive ideas. You communicate information, you're also willing to receive information and your opinions, okay? Now, that can be a bit uh, sticky, but we will, uh, I will elaborate as we go on um, how to, to try to avoid uh, confrontational conversations. Okay, you are considered to be a good uh, conversationalist, good at, at conversations. When you present yourself, it makes sense, doesn't it? You present yourself as an interesting person to talk to and to talk with. People should go away uh, after speaking with you, saying, I like talking to him or her. It, it, very pleasant, um, uh, very uh, interesting conversation, polite, and, and uh, I look forward to speaking to him or her again. That's when you consider to be a good conversationalist. You leave your conversation partners satisfied that talking to you was time very well spent and not and they didn't waste their time, okay? Um, if you do not develop good conversational skills, um, at the very worst, or rather at the very best, the people will say, okay, if I have time, I will speak to that person. If not, well, I can, I, I, I can think of better things to do. But worse still is when you become such a bad Conversationalist that people say, oh man, I don't want to speak to that person ever. It's a waste of my time. I get angry and I go away very frustrated and dissatisfied. Please, 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 please avoid being that kind of person because you're going to be, like it or not, you're going to be an island. You're going to be isolated and you're going to be frustrated and it's not a pleasant, it's not a good place to be. Would you agree? Thumbs up, please. Nobody agrees? Oh, yeah, okay. Leong, Kepan, Hosui, thank you. Dini, thank you. All right. Moving on. Some typical descriptions of conversations. Um, I'm sure you've heard these and more, but these are some typical ones. The When it's not a pleasant conversation, what do we normally hear? that it was a difficult one, that it was a confrontational one, that you know you almost killed each other because you, you had disagreements, mm -hmm. that it was an embarrassing one, you know, and, and, and something that is so boring that you forget it, it's forgettable. It was tilted, meaning it was awkward, 
was wasting your time. It was negative, boring, and uh, one way. You, either you were talking alone without waiting for any response or your conversation partner was talking at you, not with you, but at you. He or she was just talking away without wanting any response from you or waiting for any response from you. Should we avoid this? Yes or no? Thumbs up. Should we avoid all these kind of, of uh, descriptions? Yeah. We should be learning how to avoid having this kind of results uh, when we converse with others. Now, on the other hand, if you're a good conversationist, people will come away saying, I had a meaningful discussion with that person. It was really enjoyable. And it was productive. I learned a lot. And yes, I, it was rewarding too. Absorbing. I, will, I wish we, couldn't, we didn't have to end uh, the conversation, but we had to because we had things to do. And it was very amicable. I enjoyed it. It, it, it was so uh, uh, good atmosphere. It was an intelligent conversation and I learned a lot. And I think my conversation partner also learned from me a lot. It was very informative. Uh, we were engaging and we were both interested in what you, each other had to say. Okay, now you want those, right? You want those results. Let's look at how we can, you know, what are the things we can do to improve conversational skills. Practice, practice, practice. Agree? Thumbs up? Right. Okay. Practice makes perfect. I can't say this often enough. If um, you expect to be reading a, a book or, or YouTubing it, learning how to speak through YouTube, um, it's not going to work. You may be a brilliant person and it may work for you that way, but for most of us, it's not going to work. Practice is what is going to make it work. If you are, for example, uh, if any of you are learning a foreign language, if you don't practice, you learn German, for example, yeah, you took a, a one-year course, intensive course in, in German, and you can speak well in class. You can speak well while you're learning. And then you go out where after the course, you don't practice. What happens to, to your your skills, you lose it. So to keep your skills, the same here, English conversations, same thing. To keep being a good conversationalist, you have to keep on practicing. Practice, practice, practice. You're gonna get bored listening to me say this over and over again because this is key. This is key. You can learn everything else, but if you're not willing to practice, if you're shy, you're, God forbid, I don't think any of you are, but if you're lazy to practice, uh, if you're embarrassed to practice, it's not going to work. You just have to be very uh, determined to practice, practice, and practice. Okay, now, learn how to start a good conversation with a good topic, and once you start it, learn how to sustain it. No, don't just leave it halfway and then walk away or, or, or talk to someone else. Uh, you have to learn how to sustain a conversation. And very important as well, you have to learn how to end it well. You can't be conversing 24 hours per day, right? Or seven days a week, right? You have to end sometime. And there is also a good way to learn how to end it. You should be uh, make sure that the conversation ends in, on a positive note as far as possible. If it doesn't, then uh, be sure to um, try and get your uh, convince your partner to continue uh, on an, another day so that you can find common grounds to end the conversation. Okay? Stay in control. You must stay in control. Don't let 
uh, any one partner control the conversation. You must both be in control of the conversation. Again, another very important thing, besides practice, you must develop excellent listening skills. You must learn how to listen. Okay? Now, when you're listening, it doesn't mean just that you're hearing things, but you are not only hearing what your partner is saying, but you're absorbing it and you're processing it and you are processing the response as well. It sounds like a long process, but no. If you have developed um, good skills, it happens without you knowing it. It, it, it happens seamlessly, okay? What they're saying here, here is, if you want to be a good speaker, you have to be, in the first place, an excellent listener, all right? And uh, very important, how many of you, again, by show of hands, how many of you have had this problem with other people that you speak to? They keep interrupting you and they don't really listen to you. I, let me give you an example, okay? Uh, right, right hand is one conversationalist, the other is one, uh, the other conversationalist. This one says, so, um, how are you? How have you been? And this guy says, the one, the, the person uh, answering says, oh, well, I've been, and this other one goes, oh, you know, the other day, even before that this person can answer, this one already asking another question. Or we're still talking to someone else. Turn the face and talk to someone else. How many of you have had that kind of experience? Show of hands. There we are. It's very common, isn't it? Unfortunately, it is a common experience, right? Now, do you like to be on the receiving end of that experience? Remember, you were answering that person's question. You don't want it to be right. Very sad face there. <laughs> How about some sad faces and, and thumbs down? Yes. It's not something that's pleasant at all, right? So what is the impression you get of that kind of person, of that kind of conversation partner? You should tell them, attend conversation classes like this. <laughs> Seriously, though, you know that that is the wrong thing to do. So you should learn to avoid doing that. And how do you do that? Simply by being two things. One is listening, yes. One is listening. The other uh, very important ingredient is sincerity sincerity okay the the sender of the message how are you now or how are you doing should be sincere in wanting to know how that other person is doing should be sincere in waiting for the result and responding accordingly if the other person say oh i'm not so well what is the immediate response Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. If you want to share with me, what is your problem? What is your illness? Okay, that's a good way of saying it. Don't just say, hey, what? Huh? What's wrong with you? Huh? You know, it, 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 then you come across as being a busybody, right? You, you should ask, okay, if you want to share with me, I'm willing to listen. Unless he or she is a very good friend. Then say, oh my goodness, what's wrong? Then that's fine, right? Okay. So, you must be a good listener. You're listening to the fact that your partner is saying they're not doing so good, your conversation partner. is saying they're not good, doing so well, and then you should be sincere in wanting to know what is wrong. Okay? You get that? Now, thumbs up if you understand that, if you agree. If you don't agree, thumbs down, and I'll, I will try to convince you that, that that's the way to go. Okay, thank you. Great, great. Thank you. Right, all right. Um, so how to improve conversation skills, part two. Yeah, you must automatically engage. Again, right, it's a two-way thing. Meaning, a conversation is not for you to be standing on a platform and 
spewing out your ideas, your comments, your stories alone, right? And okay, now the next point, practice inclusivity means if you're conversing in a group, okay, especially applicable if you're conversing in a group, you should be very actively including other people into the conversation. You involve others in the conversation. Let's say there are five of you. You have asked a question of one person. That's fine. That person answers you. Then to start a good conversation with a, or to maintain a good conversation with a five, you will then ask others as well. And example is, um, how are you, uh, Tommy? Um, are you are you uh, doing well now? And Tommy said, oh, I'm fine, thank you. You know, last week was a good week and all that, blah, blah. And when Tommy stops, you turn and say, how about you, uh, Asma? Are you are you well as well? Are you are you having a good time? So that is how you include others. Now, again, I want to see a show of hands uh, when I ask you this question. Uh, how many of you have, have seen this? In a group, you find that there's one usually one very quiet person and no one really speaks to that person how many of you have seen that right now chances are yes uh, many of you have seen it chances are that person is a reclusive or, or introverted person right so that explains why he or she is quiet right so what you should do, your duty, your task, if you want that person involved in the conversation, if not, I don't know why he or she should be there, but if you want him or her to be involved, then you should bring the person in by asking questions, by asking whether he or she agrees with the last, what the last person said. What do you think? Uh, So-and-so has just said something, uh, gave an opinion. What do you think? bring the person in be inclusive all right so that way you 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 will be known as a good conversationalist you will be known as to a person who knows how to carry out good conversations i i mentioned this you may uh, include asking questions to prompt others to contribute like for example um, somebody has just said oh i was in chatting last week and then you turn and say how about you did you go for a holiday and introvert or not, that person will then be involved in the conversation, okay? Now, take turns. How many of us, in a, in a group of friends, I suppose it's, it's okay. But even then, my personal opinion is, if everyone speaks at the same time, who is listening, right? So I'm sure some of you, if not many, have been involved in this kind of a conversation. Everyone is trying to speak at the same time over each other. No one's listening. What is the value of that conversation? Is there value to it or no value to it? If you think there's value to it, thumbs up. Thumbs down for no value. If you agree with me, no value. Right? No value. There's no value in that kind of conversation if no one is listening. Everyone is talking. Okay, so be polite and take turns. And how do you do that? By lis listening. You By listening, you know that, okay, that person has finished with his, his or her ideas. Now maybe I can, I can jump in. And you can, uh, you know, use phrases like, oh, all right, okay, so may I... Um, Venture my opinion now, or may I tell you about my uh, experience? What happened to me last week? So you can do that by by you know by taking turns. If you're polite now, you take turns. There, and there's no need to be rude. You shouldn't ever. You should uh, you should always wait for others to finish. And do not talk over others. That example when I, uh, which I gave you earlier is the same thing as as this. You ask someone a question. Before that someone can finish, you're already talking uh, to someone else or asking another question or venturing your own opinion before you let that person finish answering your question, right? 
Okay. Now, is what I'm trying I'm trying to share with you here is it new? No, it's not. It's almost like two thousand more than two thousand years ago, uh, two thousand years old. These ideas, right? Cicero was a Roman philosopher and polit politician. He was a smart man. Oh, well, back when uh, politicians were smart people, okay. In um, the year 44 uh, BC, this man, Cicero, wrote the rules for good conversation. And you'll be surprised, as I was when I came across this, all these rules still apply today, to, 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 to this very day. The first rule is speak clearly. If you have something worth saying, and it's worth saying clearly. If it's something that you don't think it's worth saying, then don't mumble. Don't say it at all. Better still. You know, if you, if it's something that you are embarrassed that someone will listen to, then you, you mumble. Uh, there's no point in that. Just don't say it. If you have something to say, say it clearly. Okay. Um, speak easily. That means uh, naturally and relaxed, but don't um uh, just go on and on and on and on without uh, giving others a chance to say their piece i i stopped for a while because i'm still um this is a sort of a side thing i'm still not very comfortable with webinars simply because in the beginning it's always a one way conversation it's always a one way thing i have never been a teacher I've never been a lecturer, so I'm not very comfortable with this kind, this form of, of uh, conversing, so to speak, right? This becomes a lecture, but this is what we, we have, what people like to say now, it is what it is. So we, we do, we make the best of it, okay? Okay, now let's go on with that. I just had to say that on the side. You speak easily, naturally, but minding... Be, be being mindful that you have to give others their turn if they want to say something. And hopefully, your conversation partner will also um, give you respect and do the same. Once they have finished their ideas, once they have finished their, their turn, then they hand it over to someone else. And the other rule that Cicero said, do not interrupt. Unless it is absolutely necessary, then you can use a very... Um, Polite transition phrases um, by, okay, I'll give you an example. If someone is saying things that you don't agree with, okay, you and you are, you know, you just can't wait to say, um, to, to give your opinion that, that contradicts that person's opinion, and you may say, okay, I'll let you finish, but when you're done, let me tell you what I think. That's fine. That's fine. Because then you have... What have you done? You've booked your turn to speak, correct? You have booked or you have made it, uh, you have announced your intention to speak, okay? Always be courteous. There's no need to, to be um, rude or aggressive. <coughs> to, to be convinced uh, and to be very committed to your ideas is fine. That's fine that nobody can take that away from you. But there is no need to be aggressive or rude uh, in, in wanting to for your views to come out. Now, um, you should learn, or you know already by now, but remember that being assertive is different from being aggressive. Being assertive means you have shown your presence. I am here and don't discount me. All right. But being aggressive means I don't want to listen to you. Listen to me. There's two different things there. Learn the difference. It's for another lesson probably, not today, but also to be a good, good conversationalist, good to keep in mind, being assertive is different from being aggressive. Being confident is different from being uh um, uh, what was the word I'm, I'm trying to say? Being confident is different from being arrogant. 
Okay, there are two two different concepts there. You can be confident and clear in what you want to say in your opinions, but then you can also listen to me. I know I've done all this. That's what I told you earlier. Okay, I, I, what the difference is that I want to share this with you. I'm not I'm not asking you to take it all uh, in one you know uh, down your throat, but I want to share this with you. So being confident and being um, arrogant are two different things, okay? Deal seriously with uh, serious matters. When it comes to a matter of, of uh, a, a serious thing like, you know, a uh, discussion on uh, whether you should take uh, COVID vaccines or not, I don't think you can joke about that, those kind of things. So be serious when you talk about that, right? And then, um, even if you are, you know, telling jokes and all that, do it gracefully. Don't go overboard and 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 become silly. Okay. Now, next point is never criticize people behind their backs. Show of hands. How many of you have heard the expression "be kind to absent friends"? Can I see some thumbs up? Be kind to absent friends. Nobody has heard it? Okay. What it means is that, I have to put it in a very local uh, context, colloquial context, do not membawang. Do not gossip about others when they are the, not, not there to defend themselves. Is that fair enough? Is that understood? Can I, have, can I see some interaction here? All right. Great. Great, great. I like this feature, this thumbs up feature, because it makes sure that you know no, no nobody is falling asleep on me. <laughs> so all right. So <clears throat> never talk about others, let alone criticize them. You know, if they don't have a chance to defend themselves. Now, exception would be if you <clears throat> really feel that you are you need to praise someone, and they are not there. Then you can probably praise that person behind their backs. You're not talking bad about them. That's fine. But be careful in what context and what you say, because you may be saying something that they don't want to be known by others. Right? I'll give you an example. This is, these are very important things to consider uh, in conversations. I'll give you an example. Or oh, you know uh, so and so, let's say Tan. You know Tan. He has such a good heart. Last week, he went out and and gave away uh, food bags to a thousand people. Fine, you're talking well. You're talking uh, good things about your friend. But what if your friend is an anonymous donor? He or she doesn't like to be uh, known as, you know, uh, uh, philanthropist. He or she, for whatever reason, you have to respect the reason, uh, will do these kind of things, but they don't expect it to be known by others. They want it to be uh, just between himself or herself and God, maybe. Right? So, be careful. The best uh, rule to follow is, don't talk about others behind their backs. If they are there, they can defend themselves, they can receive the compliments themselves, fine. But if they are not there, just avoid talking about them. And then you should stick to subjects of general interest. Uh, if you don't want confrontational, you don't want difficult conversations, some of the subjects you should, um, should avoid are um, Religion, politics, uh, sex. These are the three subjects that you should try to avoid if you don't want difficult conversation. If you're ready to have difficult conversation for a good reason, then uh, that's a different matter. But in general, if you want to learn how to be a good general conversationalist, you avoid those subjects. Okay, the other thing is, Cicero said, do not talk about yourself, don't bore others. You talk about yourself only enough to put it in context. I refer again to what I did in the beginning when I told you about where I work, 
and uh, which countries in what businesses and all that it was to put it in context that i have experience that's all then move on don't go on and on because uh, people are going to get bored and they're going to have the effect is going to be opposite they're not going to think well of you they're going to think this person is wasting my time okay now, never lose your temper that i think is a no-brainer right um whenever whenever anyone loses temper it doesn't matter how justified that person is on the losing side never never lose your temper especially in a conversation you find yourself getting more and more angry probably the best thing to do is sorry i have to excuse myself you turn around and walk away better than losing your temper and making a probably making a fool of yourself okay and Cicero said that 2065 years ago. Isn't that amazing? Right, let's look into the do's and don'ts of conversation. Now, bear with me. If you have questions, please uh, note them down or you can start writing them down in the chat uh, uh, box now. Um, all the, the questions that you, or comments even, questions and comments and discussions, Please write, uh, write them down in the chat box. Right, let's go on to do's and don'ts of conversation. Number one rule is to be natural. Do be natural, okay? Don't be a phony. People can tell. You try to, uh, to, to pretend to be someone else. You, you try to, be, to pretend uh, to be too clever or whatever. Um, People can see through it. You'll be found out. For example, don't put on a phony accent when you don't have any accent. It doesn't matter. You can you can speak Manglish as long as you're clear. You can speak whatever uh, uh, style as long as what you are going to say is clear. That's fine. It doesn't mean that you have to have the Queen's English to be understood by everyone. In fact, the Queen's English is not understood by many people. Don't position yourself as any subject matter expert unless you are you are one. Uh, an example would be: don't position yourself as an expert on vaccinations unless you are really an expert on it. Because when you do that, you will be subjecting yourself to a lot of uh, suspicion questions. And if you're in the circle of people that you're conversing with, there's someone who knows more than you, you will be caught out as a phony, as a false person. Okay, like, don't try to, uh, it's good that you, you know, if, if you like the way Obama speaks or, or Kyrie Jamaluddin to take a local context, they are very good speakers. They are very good conversationalists. If you like the way they speak, you like the things they say, you can probably take examples of how they, they behave and all, but don't pretend that you are them and, and speak exactly like them because it, you will not be seen as natural unless you are already naturally like them, that like you're a good speaker, then it's a different thing, okay? Now, conversation is a skill. We can all learn to converse well if we do all these do's. Listen, again, I, I'm repeating it. You must listen well. Listen and think before you speak. You have to listen to you before you speak. Um, first of all, and foremost, you show your warmth by your interest. How do you show your interest? Okay, by listening to that person. If you know something about your conversation partner already, then you can show your warmth and your interest by by saying, "Listen, I know you 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 lecture at the university, and I've known some people." Who have attended your lectures and they say you are a good lecturer 
something like that. You know, you're showing your, your interest and you're showing uh, good faith by by telling the truth. Only if it's true. Huh? If it's not true, then, then don't say it because then, then the, your partner will say you're lying because I know my, my, my university students don't like my lectures. Okay. All right. So do not be a conversational narcissist. Another one. That means don't make it all about yourself. Okay. Some people are narcissists that, you know, that uh, is actually uh, a disorder, which uh, most of us are not equipped to deal with. But you yourself, you can have control over this. Don't dominate conversations if you want to have meaningful conversations. So, again, I'm repeating this. The real art of good conversation is not in the talking, but in the listening. You listen well, absorb what you are listening to, and respond intelligently. Then you will have a good conversation. Why? Because when you listen, people talk about themselves, and then you get a chance to know them. If you don't listen well, Whatever they tell you, you're not you're not benefiting from it. Your only interest is to talk about yourself. What makes you think they will be interested? They may be like you. The same thing, you know. So, if you want others to listen to you, you must listen to them, right? Take turns. We go over this. Cicero said this before. It's a two-way street. You, you share information here and there, and no monologues. Uh, what I'm doing now is a monologue, but it is by circumstance, by necessity. Because in, uh, I say it again, in a webinar, there is no chance for us to really uh, speak to each other without it getting out of control. Technology is not quite there yet. But we do get a chance to talk to each other through the uh, chat room, through the chat box, and uh, question answer at the end. So you adapt your conversation to your listener or listeners. Um, I give you an example. If you're talking to a bunch of uh, five-year-olds, five-year-old children, okay, are you going to be talking about what you know the the latest book you read uh, uh i don't know iliad or uh, some serious book adult book so you're not adapting your conversation you <laughs> that means you don't you don't um, respect your listeners what they want to listen to you you're, you're not telling them what they'd be interested in okay and as an example is don't talk about politics unless you know that everyone is on the same page. And if you are looking for a, a political conversation where you, you need to um, have different points of view, then go into a debate. You don't call that a conversation anymore. It's a debate. Okay? If a, a conversation is usually amicable, usually non-controversial, avoid politics. You want to talk about politics, I repeat, go into a debate. It's a different thing altogether. Okay, don't don't put your foot in your into your mouth. Um, how many understand this expression? Putting your foot into your mouth. Can I have see a show of hands? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up or thumbs down, please. Okay. More. So you understand, right? Um, I'll try and expand. There you go. Put it, okay, in this case, not foot, because I, I couldn't find somebody <laughs> putting their foot in their mouth. But in this case, this person is embarrassed. It's Jeff Goldblum, right? I don't know if you know if you know him at all. He was in Jurassic Park. Um, he is embarrassed. Why? Because he put his foot into his mouth. Okay. An example, a good example is, don't brag about how fit you are, how physically fit you are, because you go to the gym. If the person you're talking to is terminally ill, is suffering from a disease that he or she cannot recover from, 
You, can you see how insensitive that is? Why? Why would you want to do that? The only reason I can think of is that you don't like the person you're talking to and you just want to torture them. Otherwise, it is really not a sensitive, not a very smart thing to do. Okay? I'm sure you can think of other examples uh, of, of this disease called foot in the mouth disease. Don't interrupt, okay? The interrupting is, is, is simply rude. Uh, if you really have to go to the toilet, then maybe you can wait for the person to finish a sentence. Then say, excuse me, say something like very polite. Excuse me, I'm very interested in what you have to say. Unfortunately, I have to go now, nature calls. Please hold your thought. Please be here. I'll be right back. That's fine. That kind of interruption is fine. But even if you don't agree with what the person is saying, for example, the person is going and saying, you know, I watched uh, Manchester United last night and they were playing rubbish and you think that they played well and you say, no, I don't agree with you. And you start. When you start, you start a fight, not a conversation. You start a fight. You start a debate. You start a war. And when you're rude, it makes the other person feel all sorts of negative feelings, one of which is they feel irrelevant to the conversation. Irrelevant to the conversation. In that case, you are having a conversation by yourself. You're having a conversation with three people. I, me, myself. If you feel you if you if that's your game, well go ahead. But I don't think you can call it a conversation. Man. You, you, it's short sneery, I like call it. All right, another a set of don'ts. What? Don't leave people out. Remember? Inclusivity. You bring people into the conversation, not keep them out. Okay. Uh, don't get into a discussion with one person and leave the others out. I covered this earlier. And this is important. Lose good and steady eye contact. Uh, there's a whole, in fact, um, you know, you can talk easily for two hours uh, if, if you want to ex uh, expand and elaborate about uh, body language and eye contacts and all that. But just take it, uh, uh, suffice to say for now, that what you need to do is to maintain good and steady eye contact. Uh, it tells the person you're, con you're conversing with that you're sincere, that you you don't have, you know what people call shifty eyes. You, you look left, right, left, right, down, up, anywhere and, and everywhere except right at that person that your contact, your, sorry, your conversation partner's eyes, right? So don't lose good and steady eye contact. There's a, a simple illustration there. Don't look up, don't look down. Just look straight into that person's eyes. I know in some cultures it's very uncomfortable, um, but if you want to be a good conversationalist, this is one of the rules. I know that um, in, I'll say, okay, in, in, uh, certain religions, certain cultures, a man cannot stare into the eyes of, of, of a woman, should always look down. Okay. But if you want to have to be a good conversationalist, it's your call. Whether the important thing is sincerity. Why are you looking at the other person's eyes? Because you want to connect, because you want to exchange ideas, because you want to exchange information, because you want to have a good conversation. If you have other thoughts in mind, then it's not conversation anymore. I will not comment on that. Don't overshare your feelings, TMI, too much information, right? Um, uh, an extreme example, uh, last night I went out to dinner and I had uh, something that didn't agree with my, my stomach and I went to the toilet seven times. To do what? Stop there. Nobody wants to know what you did in the toilet seven times, okay? They can, you can just leave it to their imagination. In fact, you shouldn't even be saying it if you're, if you're talking to someone that you don't know. It's simply not that kind of information you want to share. So don't overshare your feelings. Don't overshare your stories. Another example would be you just met someone and then the person asks you, so um, how are you? What do you do normally? And then you suddenly say, well, I'm not very well. 
Uh, I have to go uh, get uh, to hospital five times a week. I have to get more medication. This doctor I don't like. That doctor, I... nobody wants to know all that in the first meeting or even, you know, don't make it all about yourself. A conversation means it's a two-way street. Gauge whether that person really needs to know all the details. Your simple answer to that question would have been, I could be better. I'm not in a good place right now, but I could be better. How about you? Simple. Okay. If you're interested in maintaining a good conversation. If you're not, if you feel like you want to treat her, your Twitter again, then write it down and send it to someone. Nobody should be forced to listen to your oversharing. Nobody that you like will want to share your oversharing. Remember that very, very, very well. Remember that well. Okay. Uh, you should leave people a little bit intrigued, meaning that they should be interested in further knowing you. So give them tidbits of information. Uh, I, I can give you an example. Okay. Um, I hear that you were in the heavy equipment business. And so was I, you know, and then you, again, you, you make it about them. So what did you uh, deal with? And that person should then be interested. Oh, you were in the business too. What, what machines did you sell? What brands did you, what kind of customers did you face? Uh, did you find it easy to, to, to work with this kind of customer or this kind of this industry? So then you can see a good conversation developing. Correct. So. Tell them a little bit and then see if they want to know more. If they want to know more, no harm in sharing. If they say, oh, nice, okay. You know, uh, I prefer football. Uh, then you, you know that. That topic of conversation is dead or should be dead. May come back to it later, but for now, talk about football. That's what uh, your partner wants to say. If you're not interested in football, you say, oh, good for you, but I'm really interested more in rugby. Oh, I'm really not interested in sports. Then find another common ground to talk about. Okay? Another set of notes. Right, this one. Uh, I'm sure many of you have come across people who feel that they uh, are not complete until they make sure you know that they are better than you. Again, I like to encourage uh, interaction. Therefore, can I see a uh, show of hands, thumbs up, if you have come across this. If you haven't come across this, you must be one of the luckiest people in the world. So how many of you have come across uh, conversation partners who always feel that they are better than you? Can I see show of hands? Nobody? Okay, yes, yes, right. I keep asking this because I want to make sure that I'm not the only one thinking this way. <laughs> if I'm the only one thinking this way, uh, either all of you are behind or, <laughs> or I'm the weird one, right? Okay, so um, I can see some, some people agreeing that you, you have come across this kind of people. Don't do that. Don't do that because it... You only annoy your, your partners. You leave them very uh, uh, negative. You know, they have, they have very negative feelings towards you. Hey, for example, I, this happened to me. Eh? I, let me relate to you. I'll tell, I like to tell stories, so I'll, I'll tell you a story. A uh, long time ago, I worked in, in Johor Bahru, and I had a group of friends. We were all, uh, you know, very uh, sociable. At the same time, some of us worked, uh, you know, professionally. We worked, uh, we were uh, also business uh, acquaintances. So there was one particular person whom I didn't find uh, to be a nice person. Um, I, I just call, I just call this this guy uh, Alan for, for just to give you an example, right? So one day I was uh, sitting at a, 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 a club having lunch with a group of friends. And then uh, Adam, we were having nice conversation as, as usual. We, you know, we like each other. We have common interests. Huh? And Ellen comes in 
and um, someone says, oh, Alan, I saw your new car. It's a very nice car. I saw it in the car park. And so everyone spoke about Alan's car. And Alan was very proud, beaming, and, and, and things like that. And to be polite, I also got into the conversation and um, asked him, I think it's a new model, isn't it? I know that the old model was, uh, was this kind of price. Uh, is it a lot more than the, 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 the current model? Or how much do you pay for it, Alan? You know what Alan did? He turned around to me and said, why do you want to know? You can't afford it. Do you think that's the right thing to say? Do you, do you think that's the right way to carry out a conversation? What was he trying to do? He was trying to establish the fact that he had more money than me. Did anybody care? You, what do you think the others, um, uh, how do you think the others reacted? One of them told, you don't have to be such a, okay, I won't say the word. You don't have to be such a, a bad person. I'll just be polite and say that. It, all he did was, was trying to make a conversation with you. He was interested in, why do you have to say that? You know. So that's an example of how you shouldn't um, get into a conversation and, and you shouldn't say what things you shouldn't say um, to, to avoid having a bad conversation. They believe, you now the people who believe, who like to do that, they think they show their superiority, but actually they are, they are showing their weakness, their, their insecurity rather than their superiority. Because there's always someone who has got a better car than you, who's richer than you, who's smarter than you. Always remember that. Humility has no price. Humility is so important in being a good person and in carrying out sensible conversations. The four things not to say. You think you're being polite by saying, um, sorry, am I boring you? The effect is not politeness, but just the opposite. It is an embarrassing and confrontational question. If you, if I were to ask you right now, am I boring you? I may have the full, uh, fully good intentions that I want to know that you, that you are interested in what I'm saying. But you as a, uh, as a listener, you start saying, what did I do to deserve that kind of a question? It's like accusing me of being uninterested, accusing me of being bored, you know? Uh, worst thing is that can happen is the person say, yes, I think you should stop talking. If I'm, you are, you're asking me if I'm, you're boring, boring me? Yes, you are. Stop talking. Then what happens? Your conversation is dead. It never even started, right? So instead of asking a question like that, you note the person's facial expressions and body language. Earlier, when we first started this uh, webinar, I was hoping that everybody would turn on their camera so that I can see expressions, I can see body language, and if you look bored, then I know how to change, how to change my tone, how to... Interaction is what I was looking for, but it doesn't seem to work. That's fine. That's, that's not a problem. Uh, we, can, we can have a more interactive uh, engagement after I finish the, the session and we go into the questions and, and answer session. Um, the other thing not to say, this is just simply rude. When you didn't hear or didn't understand, two things. You didn't hear in full because the words didn't come out clearly or you didn't understand. Don't say, huh? Or what? Say what? Eh? These are very rude expressions which you can use when you are speaking with family and friends. Even then, there's no need to be rude. You can still be polite. But okay, never mind. If you are with friends who you are very close to, maybe you can use this. But in a, a normal conversation with a business acquaintance or with a friend that you're not so familiar with or a relative that you, you know, that you want to remain polite with, don't use these words. Huh? What? Say what? And A. It's too abrupt and too rude. And 
whoever was talking to you, conversing with you, will feel very awkward. Instead, you could ask, would you repeat that, please? Uh, I didn't quite understand or didn't quite uh, hear what you were saying. I didn't catch it. This is how you can say it. Instead of, huh, what? Okay, the other thing is, do not nod and smile if you didn't hear or didn't understand the speaker. Why? An extreme example is, what if that person said, you owe me a million ringgit, and you go, you nod. Means you agree, you owe the guy a million ringgit. You can only nod if you really owe him a million ringgit, okay? That person, you then, when the person said, okay, give me my million now, and you go, Oh, <laughs> all right. The other thing not to say is grammar Nazi. How many people know what grammar Nazi means? Any show of hands? Okay, I'll explain it. Grammar Nazi is when it's someone who insists on correcting someone else when they are speaking. Um, an example here is somebody says uh, uh, between you and I, uh, and you say, nope, you should say between you and me. It's not between you and I. You interrupt and you say that. Okay. I'll tell you why you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. You'll come off as boastful, smug, um, you know, not, not a very nice person. And whatever rapport you were trying to build with the person you're speaking to is dead, okay? You may be right. In this case, you're right. It should say, it should, you should say between you and me and not between you and I, right? But being right, what? So what? So what if you're right? But you don't, you, you, you have killed the conversation. So you won the battle, but you will lose the war. That's what I mean there. And I love this saying, okay? Especially the first sentence. It is better to be kind than to be right. Now, if you believe in this, and if you practice this, you will find yourself involved in less controversial conversations or fights or quarrels or disagreements. You can be right. In the case, example, the between you and me and between you and I. You're right, it shouldn't say between you and I, it should say between you and me. But what do you gain by telling that person, you're wrong, I'm right? You shouldn't be saying it that way, you should be saying it this way. What do you gain from that? You know, we do, the saying goes, we do not need an intelligent mind that speaks, but a patient heart that listens. Again, the key word, listen, listen, listen. Listen well, be empathetic, and uh, build at good conversations. It doesn't come uh, just automatically. Okay. Um, also, you might think you're being polite by, you know, and, and probably slightly embarrassed if you're talking to people and say, uh, you know, you may have heard of this, but stop me if you have heard this story before, you're not actually being polite because no one will ever really stop you. They're just being polite in 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 listening, in carrying on listening to what you're saying. So if you think the story has been told too many times before, just don't tell the story. But if you think the story is important to in the context of your conversation, go ahead and tell it without apologizing for it. Don't apologize for it, because if you believe that the story has relevance, the story is very much in context, then go ahead. Then it's important to tell the story. No one is going to be angry that you told the story, because at the end of it, there is value to that story. Okay? So don't do this. Don't say in thinking that you're being polite. Uh, you may have heard of this, but, you know, stop me if you have heard of it. Don't. You can say, you may have heard of this, but bear with me, I'll tell it to you again because it's relevant to our conversation. 
is relevant in our context. Okay. Don't bore people. Don't shock sendiri. Okay. So um, again, it's related to. Uh, stop me if I told you. Don't tell stories that just um, elevates yourself without any other relevance, without any other purpose, but just to elevate yourself. That's called uh, being short sendiri. So what happens when you bore your audience? They fall asleep. You don't want that. It's to me, when I'm carrying out a conversation, a two-way conversation, and I see my partner nodding off, yawning, or being un un uninterested, it's a real huge slap in my face. It's a wake-up call. Stop talking. Stop talking. And, and do something else. Okay. Um, you've heard of difficult conversations. It's a situation in which at least two parties are talking to each other, engaged, where there are differing opinions. Remember, if you start talking about religion, you never know what the other person uh, other person's views are on religion, and um, if you, you start giving your uh, perspective on things, it may not jive or it may not be the same as the other person's perspective, and your needs and your wants might be different. So you will get into difficult conversations. And uh, a, a, a conversation becomes very difficult when you let feelings and emotions rule rather than keeping a cool head you give in to your feelings and you give in to your emotions then you will have more than just difficult conversations you will have a minor war and um, when the both of you have different uh, ideas of what you want out of the conversation what are the consequences of the conversation you want uh, help the other person also wants help. So, you you know, you're competing with each other. That's one example. Uh, the other example could be you just want to talk about yourself. The other person is not interested. The consequences and the stakes are different. And also, uh, if, the, if the result of the conversation should result in something very uh, significant, like working together or signing a paper or whatever, or going out to the same movie together, then uh, you can have a difficult conversation. And um, here are some very quick tips on how to deal with unpleasant conversations. You acknowledge, then you redirect the conversation. Let me explain that further. Example of how to redirect the conversation. When someone brings up a topic that can cause an argument at a party, you may want to say something like, you acknowledge that that person has a different opinion. There are quite a few different opinions on the issue. Why don't we discuss something more pleasant, something that is more in common, you know, something that that, uh, that is not controversial. Like, for example, like your last trip to the islands. This is a very good way of giving the signal to the other person. I'm not interested in a confrontational uh, conversation. I'm not interested in uh, a debate with you, or an argument with you. Why don't we, if we want to continue conversing, why don't we talk about something more pleasant, something that we have in common? You, your, I knew that you. I know. Sorry, I know that you took a trip to the islands. How was it? Okay. Tips and takeaways. We are coming to uh, to an end very quickly now. Um, Conversation is supposed to be flowing. You know the right thing to say and make it sound effortless. That means uh, you're not, you know, uh, it, it's not something that you put on. It's natural. For many, that th this is difficult because they think too much about it. Don't think too much about it. Be more natural. Okay? Then uh, they can't seem to take the conversation beyond small talk. They can do small talk, but they cannot give any you know make it more uh worth it worthwhile do not stress out about it be natural i always enjoy conversations by sharing something in common because for, for example i just finished finished reading a book uh, that the other person reads a lot 
So I asked that person, what are the books they are reading? And you start a good conversation. You find a common ground, okay? These are the three things I look for in a, in a good conversation partner. I look for warmth, sincerity, openness, yeah? And I look for a connection that we both feel that we are connected. You come to a conversation with topics that you're ready with. You converse to connect rather than to confront. Conversations are essential life skill. It's, 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 it's necessary in both your social and your workplace. And the key to being a good conversationalist, I'm going to say it again, listen well, respect your partners, and practice, practice, practice. So, okay, we have come to the end of the uh, session. Can you please um, uh, put your questions in the chat box? Or you can turn on your video and you can ask me questions online directly. Dini, can you take over now? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah mod moderate the discussion. Okay. So, uh, to all participants, if you do have any question, you can write in our chat box. Or you may also switch on your mic. And video, if you and want. Video. <laughs> yes. If you want, switch on the video. So you may ask anything that you are not unsure or unclear to our speaker today. Looks like there's no question at all. So <laughs> I've, been, I've done a very good job. <laughs> okay. Um, there are some here. All right. Let me start now. Um, okay. When having, this is from, all oh, right. When having conversation in a group, my confidence level getting lower because of the accent and vocabulary phrases slang use. I don't really quite get it. May I know how this can be improved? Actually, um, depends on, okay, I cannot who, uh, mention who said this because uh, this person messaged me privately, but the answer is this. You can, um, it depends on who, who you're talking to. If it's a group of friends, then you can be more frank and say, uh, guys, can you uh, speak you know, in, uh, in a way that I can, that can, I can better understand you? Um, they shouldn't be using phrases and slang in, in a mixed group like that. Okay? Um, but the part about my confidence level getting lower, you shouldn't. Your confidence level shouldn't be lower because this is how it is. It's not... The onus is not on you as the listener to uh, decide what level of conversation uh, it's at. The onus is on the person giving out the message. If it's important to them that you get the message, then they will change the tone, they change the vocabulary, they will change the phrase. Right. The other thing you can do in such a situation is just say, I, I would like to know more about what you're saying, but right now, I cannot understand it. Uh, if you can make me understand it better, I would be grateful. But if you cannot, then I shouldn't be a part of this conversation. I, then you just keep quiet and listen. So the onus is not on you. Your confidence level shouldn't get lower. You're not the problem. It's there, the way they converse, that's the problem. Okay? How to avoid nervous? Um, be natural. Be natural. I know that uh, sometimes this is from uh, also privately. Okay. Uh, I know that sometimes the stakes are high, uh, that it's important that you have a good conversation. But just, be, just remember that you're conversing with another human being. So, that human being also, no matter what the position of that human being is, is also a human being with uh, the same flaws 
the same uh, weaknesses, the same strengths as you do. So you try to, not try to, you must think of them as being on the same level. If it's um, something that that makes you nervous, then you, you should try to um, break the ice by, by avoiding certain subjects and talking about subjects that you're very, very confident with. Uh, if you want an example, it could be um, that person is talking about mergers of companies. It's not a subject that you're familiar with, but you can, here's what you can do. You can say, oh, that's a subject that I'm not familiar with, but very interested. Can you explain to me uh, maybe how, how important mergers are, how it happens? What happens then is that person is more uh, amenable or will be more attracted to talk to you um, and, and engage fully with you because, why? Because that person knows now that you are interested in the conversation, okay? Right, another one is, how could you share any tips to overcome awkward conversation, especially during job interview? How to relive or re, how, relive or revive or to how to, hmm, I don't quite understand the relive the conversation, but how to overcome awkward conversation? Again, by being natural and by developing confidence. And how do you do this? by practicing, by practicing regularly. You know, you have family, you have close friends, tell them, I want to converse. Uh, if you're talking about being nervous, uh, conversing in English, for example, I want to converse in English. Help me out by having conversations with me regularly in English or uh, on, on a certain subject. Uh, help me out by, you know, uh, practicing with me, conversing on this subject. Now, especially during job interview, you would know the kind of job you're going for, right? So, learn all you can about that and uh, pick up interesting points about that subject matter, all right? Now, for example, if you are, uh, just an example, yeah? if you're going for a job as a salesperson for Prodoa, right? And there are many interesting subjects around there. Your main competitor is Proton. Your, uh, in, uh, the other competitors have a disadvantage over the national cars because tax is very high on their cars. So these are the subjects that you, are, you, that you should be reading up more on. And then you ask questions or, and, and you make comments based on those, um, those two areas in that. So it demonstrates that you, number one, that you... Um, are knowledgeable, you know, at, at a certain level, and that you are interested in the whole subject. Okay, so that's how you um, you you break down the nervousness. Now, being nervous is not necessarily negative. Remember this. It's not uh, today's webinar is not uh, this subject. This it's not a relevant subject. But when you mention nervous uh, nerves and all that. I would say it's relevant now. Being nervous is not a negative feeling. When you have butterflies in your stomach, when you're nervous about something, it's a good sign. You may laugh at this. You may think, what? What is this man going about? How can you be nervous and it's a good sign? It is because it shows that you care, that you are passionate. For example, that question about the interview you are passionate about the job you're going for. It shows to the interviewer that you care about wanting to be, to join that company, right? If you go in without any nerves at all and you act confident, you may be seen, maybe, maybe seen as arrogant. Right amount of confidence is fine. Right amount of nervousness is fine too. Mixture, a mixture of those two, be natural. That's that's how I can I can answer your question. Any more any more questions here? Um, I have a question for for Dini and um, for the uh, organizers. Uh, I have a comment here that uh, someone tried to turn on the webcam, but somehow the laptop didn't allow. 
I find it quite strange that nobody else also turned on their webcam. So could it be in the program? Can you check it out? Okay, let me check there. Let's yeah, not, me not now. I mean, uh, for future webinars. Yeah. It could be in the program where you have not allowed the participants to turn on the cameras. Because I find it takkan semuanya nervous and, and, and shy that they don't want to switch on the the camera. I can only see <laughs> Betul ke uh, Juni Sayela Naswar? Is that right? Is it uh, sweet thing? I know you tried and you couldn't uh, turn on the camera. So I appreciate your efforts. I, I, I know many of you tried to turn on your cameras to have a two-way conversation, but there might be a flaw in the, in the, what do you call it? In the programming. Okay, there are more questions here. Um, Mr. Ghani, is it possible to stay? Oh yeah, okay, sure. I will um, message you privately after this. We allowed, oh, we allowed the participants to unmute their mic and open video on their own, but it doesn't, uh, for some reason, doesn't happen. May I just try uh, a quick, uh, what do you call this, uh, a quick um, experiment? May I ask uh, Amir Muhammad Azam, are you still here? Amir? Thumbs up if you're still here. Okay, host we think. How about you? Are you still here? Okay, Amir. Amir, you've just given a thumbs up. Can you turn on your camera? Would you like to turn on your camera? Thumbs up or yes? Oh, I see another one turn on camera. Amir? Are you still with me? Okay, ho, ho, sweet thing. There you are. You can turn on the camera. Okay, so uh, there might be reasons why you don't want to turn on the camera. Um, I respect your reasons, but I asked for it earlier so that we can have a uh, face to face. Now I can see how you look like, Amir. And you, and I'm sorry, yeah, there's another one on with the camera on as well. Okay, uh, ho, sweet thing said cannot turn on the camera. So there, there might be some people with uh, camera issues. Anyway, more questions. I'm, I'm waiting for uh, more questions. I'm still here. We still have time, right? Um, Dini? We're doing all right. Yes, we, we still have time. Our session will end at 4 o'clock. Yeah, so we have about 15 minutes for questions. Yes. You can ask me, we can take advantage of this time if you think you know everything already about conversations, ask me about something else. Interview maybe? <laughs> I don't mind. I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Sorry, can I speak Malay because my English is a little bit... Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, um, I'm speaking English all the time because uh, the whole series is about... Yes. Uh, let me try to explain. The whole series is about improving English. So if you don't mind, I listen to you in Malay, but if you don't mind, I'll answer to you in English. Okay, is that good? Okay. That's good. All right, let's go. Okay. Uh, first thing first, uh, sometimes bila kita jumpa orang, yeah. um, maybe first time, yep. uh, atau orang yang kita biasa jumpa, cuma yep. sometimes idea untuk bercerita atau bersembang tu dia tak keluar. Bila tak okay. keluar, kita akan jadi macam uh, kaku. Uh -huh. Then, uh, yeah. dia senyum, kita senyum. Maybe uh, kita akan dengar dia punya cerita atau dia okay. punya uh, pandangan. But okay. bila kita nak cerita balik, kita nervous. Nervous dan okay. susah nak cakap. Idea tu jadi macam, uh, kita punya idea jadi blank. Okay. Nak cakap apa. So, so orang akan oh, nak sembang apa dengan dia ni eh. Uh, nak sembang nak cerita apa, macam boring je. Macam ekstronok okay. ya, yeah. uh, saya tu yeah. rasa macam down sangat bila macam tu. Alright. So, uh, topik, kadang-kadang topik tu tak kena. Uh, bila tak kena yeah. topik, uh, then dia akan jadi tegang lah. Bukan tegang, uh, jadi macam awkward kan? Awkward lah. Ha, ha, ha. Awkward. Macam, uh, ya, yeah. uh, baik stop kan? Eh? Baik stop cakap kan? Tak ada benda. Okay. Now, <laughs> let me ask you a question. Yeah? I ask you a question. How many topics of interest do you have? Uh, five? Ten? One hundred? One thousand? Yes, yes. Explore those topics of interest. 
surely you can find something in common. If it's important enough for you to continue talking to this person, you explore. Bila dia cakap, and they tell you that, uh, you know, what they are interested in, you pick up on that. Kalau, for example, for example, you're talking to another guy, and the guy says, uh, last week, I I'm, I'm a football fan. Last week, I watched a very good match. Did you watch? Dah, connect. If you're interested in football, kalau tidak, you, you say, oh, I, football tak berapa sangat, but badminton, did you watch the, the Bangkok finals? Tengok, tengok, you're interested. Okay? So, these kind of things, surely, after about three or four attempts, right, at different topics, surely there's one that you must be interested in. Or, that person could have just come out from jail and don't know anything at all. Cannot be that. So, <laughs> there must be one topic of interest that you will, you both will find. The point is, the point is, you got the right thing. The point is, Find common ground. Find a common ground that is easy to talk about. Like I said, best to avoid religion, race, politics, and sex. Those are very dangerous topics. Might be interesting, especially the last one, but try to avoid it because you don't know yet the kind of person you are speaking to. Am I speaking to uh, quickly for you? You understand, right? Yes, yes, clearly. Yeah. yeah. Really Again, I repeat, I'm speaking in English because that's the spirit of this whole webinar so that we all learn uh, to improve our English. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good question, Ami. Uh, did I answer your question uh, well enough or do you need more clarification? Do you need more? You oh, need no, me no. more? No? Clearly, sir. Thank you very much. All, all good? Okay. All right. Thank you for the question. All right. Anybody else? Uh, Sweeting, are you okay? You, I, I see that you still cannot turn on your camera, but you can ask me a question. Um, I can, if I can hear you, I can answer you. Anybody else? Can I you, we can have one more question, last question for today. Yep. No. Wow. I I either did a very good job, uh, Dini, that everybody understands everything there is to know about conversations, or I just killed our conversations. <laughs> I did a bad job that everybody's uh, conversation skills died. <laughs> everybody's dead now. <laughs> um. Okay. I have a question here. Any tips or technique to break the silence? Like how to start engaging conversation. Okay. If there is a silence, and this is from Sri Teng, eh? if there is a silence, it could be that you haven't found the same answer that I would give to Amir, that I give to Amir. You haven't found an area, a common area or common ground to speak about. Okay. Now, if I look outside where I'm living now, it's going to rain. What does that mean? The weather is always a very common thing and easy thing to discuss. Do you know last week there was a big storm in my area? Many trees fell. Surely the other person, if he or she is a live person, not a dead person, will be interested in that. Trees fell? That's dangerous. There you are. You started a conversation already. Right? Do you think? Um, it can be something as, as mundane or as, you know, as um, uh, uninteresting as that. But once you break the barrier, once you know how each other think, surely you both think that trees falling are dangerous. Right? The idea is that the trees falling are dangerous and that there was a storm. So, the other partner, your conversation partner, sweet thing, could be saying, oh, there's nothing. In my area, the whole area was flooded. There, it was like three feet of water. You started a conversation. So from there, you can move on. Maybe you both are interested in um, climate change. 
maybe you both can say this is due to climate change. You know, and again, the conversation goes on. Right. Find a topic. The point is, find a topic that you both are interested in and you both seem to be on the same page and you take the conversation from there. You will find that you you have other topics about to, to talk about um, besides the, the weather, the trees that fell. Uh, were they big trees or small trees? I think they should be planting only small trees by the roadside. And your partner, Sweetin, says, I agree with you. They shouldn't be planting brick trees. Something like that. So you, the conversation goes on from uh, the storm, the weather, to trees. Right? How trees are good for the, for, the, for the environment. And you start talking about the environment. If, the cars, if, if there was a storm, many cars got, got uh, what do you call that, damaged. And maybe you, are, you both have interest in cars. Talk about cars. And so on and so forth. Does that answer your questions, you think? Great. Great. You're welcome. Yes. Um, anybody else? Boleh lagi kan? We still have seven minutes. Miss Moderator, Dini? Yes. <laughs> we still have seven minutes. Yeah, we still have seven more minutes. Yeah. You can uh, unmute your mic or you can write in our chat box for any yeah. question. Yep. Anybody else? Well, I've done a, uh, either a very good job <laughs> or a very bad job. All right, let's see show of hands. Did you all uh, enjoy the talk? Show of hands, thumbs up if yes. Thumbs down, I don't mind. I don't mind seeing thumbs up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Any thumbs down? Because I welcome thumbs down as well because then I know how to improve. Good, excellent, excellent. Okay, uh, I have more questions here. I'm looking forward to, okay. I'm afraid to talk to people. Okay, uh, Uspalita, you're afraid to talk to people with angry face. Very good question and very common. I agree that some people have the kind of face that says, do not disturb me. You speak one word to me and I will kill you. Okay, <laughs> there are, Some people have that face. But you know what? You can't help it. You don't know what happened to them, right? You don't know the kind of person they are, right? All you know, it's a face of a nervous person. A person who is not used to talking to others. So my advice would be, probably, I know it's hard. It's not going to be easy. It's hard. But ignore the, the face or the look on the face. And if you find that it's still necessary to talk to that person, to converse with him or her, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. What's the most they can do? Ignore you. Or tell you to shut up. And you just say, okay, thank you. Walk away. Finish. No issue. Right? What's it to you? That Nothing, right? The problem with that person's angry face is their problem, not yours. So you have nothing to fear. You feel like you need to converse with that person, talk to him or her. If they don't want to respond, it's their problem. It's their privilege. Then you, you may want to just stop, you know? I mean, give up on a hopeless cause. It's not, it's not worth uh, you uh, doing anything anymore. Does that answer your question? Puspa? You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Um, any any others? Please give me a minute.
All right, any others? You receive any more questions, Mr. Shagani? Um, no, that, that was the last from uh, Puspalita, Puspalata, sorry. Puspalata. Okay, all right. So uh, if uh, you don't mind, I would like to ask all participants to switch on their video so we can take a picture. Yes, please do that. But I think one or two will have problems with, uh, with the camera. With the camera. Uh, camera. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so uh, to all participants, please uh, switch on your video. So we could take a picture for this session. <laughs> they all don't want to be in the... <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, now we can yeah. see Kapilia Kade. Hi. <laughs> All right, more, more, more. More, anyone else? Yes. Yeah, hello. That's nice. Thank you, everyone. Okay, anyone else? Can we get a few more? Mr. Aizuddin, uh, Leong Katpan, Farah Izati. If you don't mind, just switch on your video so we can take a picture, a very fast one. Somebody yeah. put a thumbs up instead of a picture because yeah. they cannot open the video. <laughs> Yes, yes. So if I you can open that. your video, then put thumbs up. There, three things. Okay. All right. Okay, so we just, uh, okay, in one, two, and three. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Okay, Smile. one more. Okay, now we go for freestyle. Okay, one, two, and three. Okay. So I would like to say thank you to Mr. Shah Ghani for the very informative uh, session for okay. today. And thank you to all participants for joining with our English webinar for today. Thank you. Okay, so okay, we have uh, one last survey question before you all leave the room. So you can scan the barcode, the QR code. If you have any problem while scanning, you just can let me know. I will share the link. Please share the link in our chat box. So, Mr. Shagani, maybe you want to share how they can connect with you if you have any like LinkedIn profile. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm I'm on LinkedIn, so I'll I'll just right here.
I also give my WhatsApp number. You're welcome to um, connect with me on LinkedIn and also uh, on uh, WhatsApp if you have any other questions regarding this topic or any other topic. I, I don't mind. I don't mind helping. I like I like working with people. I like helping people because I'm helping myself as well. I learn things from you as well. Tony Amir, are you okay? Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Very Maybe good. I can, uh, send a question on WhatsApp after this. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Right. But you actually, jangan malu malu. You can ask here. Okay. Uh, I don't mind. Uh, you should have asked it when we had the session, but still, right. still at the time. <laughs> okay. So the next one is when, Dini? Uh, next webinar on Thursday. Is it? Somebody is asking. Shazad Nick wants to know the next webinar. Yes, next webinar, webinar is on Thursday. Right. But that's not with me though. So you all can turn on camera. Jangan malu-malu. <laughs> Help the next uh, webinar.